is McAfee.com is one of his websites. McAfee, M-C-A-F-E-E, 2016.com. FutureTentCentral.com. I'm not going to go over his whole background at NASA and an engineer and uh, computer uh, pioneer and the inventor of the most popular software for antivirus ever or his legendary escape being made into three major motion pictures and two or three other TV shows right now out of Belize or the fact that he claimed it was Ryerson and terrorists and Muslim radicals coming into the U.S. with fake passports. I, I actually said I didn't believe that at the time. I mean, I said, I don't think you're a liar, but this is too crazy. This is right when he got out and got back into the U.S. He, well, he talked to us from, from Guatemala, actually. No, before he was in Guatemala, he came on our show first, recommended by his friends, even know who we were. But I, I just couldn't buy it all. I thought he was a good guy, but then it all came out what he said was true. So the real-life Captain Morgan uh, meets, uh, I don't know, I don't know, Captain Morgan meets uh, another swashbuckler, let's say, from the future, Han Solo. It's good to have you with us, Mr. McAfee. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. I'm glad to be here. And I, I know you're a Trump supporter, and I, I regret to say that um, when I come out of the gates as the Libertarian nominee in, in, uh, in May, I, I will mop the floor with Donald Trump. My apologies, sir, but that's just the way it is. Hey, let me be clear. Let me be clear. You're such a maverick and a real wild man. I want an ace of spades in there that'll Trump pun intended, the establishment's globalist takeover. So if you had a big shot of winning out before you, maybe as a libertarian, you will. But you're going to get liberals and conservatives and libertarians. All I'm saying is, separate from that, your, your quote's on Trump. If you want to say he's bad, some areas fine, go ahead. But isn't he scaring the whole power structure? Isn't that refreshing? Oh, it is, absolutely. And, and, and I hope I actually make it to the election. Uh, yesterday on CNN, I debated the uh, FBI rep, um, uh, Mr. James Gordon, a very slick uh, a gentleman. I actually, he's a goon, but a gentleman from uh, from the FBI um, on their uh, their attempt to force Apple to put uh, a, a master key in their software. And uh, I've been trashing the FBI and the NSA for the past week. And I claimed in Business Insider that the um, that the NSA, by forcing a backdoor on a piece of software illegally, by planting a programmer. Um, in uh, a major computer manufacturer allowed the government to be hacked by foreign agents because the foreign agents got that back door. So I fully expect any moment my door to be burst in and, and a joint uh, FBI uh, and So let's be clear, you're saying you've released some classified info. I did, yes, sir. I did. And, and it was absolutely true. Uh, it was first released by Anonymous, um, but totally verified through a number of different agencies. Well, we know so this keeps happening. It's why Apple is aren't saints, but uh, they're saying, we put back doors in, everyone's going to get them, and then we're going to be a crap platform like PC. Well, the, the FBI agent last night had the nerve, Alex, to say, we are trying to protect you. You have to give up privacy and personal freedoms in order to get that. It's like saying, someday you may be raped, so we're going to gang rape you with 300, you know, men. Absolutely. So, so, but I think I, by the end of that interview, I had I had completely trashed him. Uh, the the uh, my first interview on uh, RT of uh, about the Apple FBI thing got over a half million views on my YouTube. No, no, I understand. Account. I want to get into. You're the computer expert. I want to hear what you think about this Obamacare. I want to. I'm supporting you for president because you'll educate folks. I just hope you don't take too much away from Trump. But I support both of you. I support Mavericks. That doesn't mean I got to support one person. I mean that's why you're on. But, but getting into Trump, it's newsworthy. Give us your take on Donald Trump and why you say you're going to mop the floor with him, John McAfee. You know, I'm actually, I'll, I'll mop the floor with whoever is the Democratic nominee first, Alex, because they, they, they deserve to, uh, to be mopped with. Um, but there, there are a couple of things. You know, I, I like Trump. Trump is a, is a nice guy, and he's, he's certainly uh, galvanized and, and solidified a, a, a massive base of Americans. Um, but there, there are certain things that you know, he wants to build his wall and build it higher. But look at the truth of this, Alex. You're wanting to build a wall between our country and a nation of the finest tunnel builders on the planet. This is the facts of it. I mean, They'll El make Chapo, it obsolete overnight. I mean, it, it is a yes, stunt, him saying build a wall. It is. Uh, other than that, I mean, it, and, and actually, I don't like the style of the, the politics in, in either the, the Democratic or the Republican Party. I mean, Donald Trump and, and Ted Cruz are up there pointing fingers at each other about the way they apply their makeup before they do the debate. Well, honest to God, Alex, we have problems in this country. Serious and Rubio's problems. talking about Trump's wee-wee not being big. I'm sorry? Uh, Rubio's talking about uh, Donald Trump's package. Yeah, right. His fingers, are, his fingers are short and stubby. I agree. But both of them are doing the same thing. And so, uh, honestly, do you think 
other nations in the world are respecting us by the way the Democrats and the Republicans are, are doing their political machine? No, I don't think so. We look like fools, Alex. And forget the other nations. I, I think the American people, you know, the, the fact that, that we are putting up with it, why don't we demand some seriousness? I want to know, know what everybody stands for. What are you going to do about uh, cybersecurity? about uh, immigration, about uh, the economy. What, what are you going to do about our bloated government? Almost $4 trillion a year down the tubes. I mean, I spent over $40 million, paid over $40 million in taxes in my life. I received nothing from that $40 million, and I don't think you have either, Alex. What are we doing here? John, so, let's walk through it. Let's walk through it. Let's start out with the Apple situation. I have a clip of one of the FBI folks actually out there putting out this info. And I'm not here to even bash the FBI, but they're lying they want yes. Apple to make a piece of software, as you said, that doesn't exist. Isn't that indentured servitude and sets an incredible precedent? Yes, it's a violation of, of the 13th Amendment. But beyond that, Alex, what they're asking for is a master key when they don't need one. They just have one phone that says, please give us the information. I offered to do it for the FBI for free, assuming they could not. And I did it on CNN, on CNBC, uh, on CBS, on Larry King Live. On RT, I wrote, I wrote an article for Business Insider that had 2 million readers. And I said, I'll do this for free. And explain and yes, to people, you just go around it. You don't go through the encryption. And for those that don't know or I understand just, this, they could also get the data from the phone company and the ISP. So it's a total red herring from the FBI. Completely. And James Comey lied under oath to Congress yesterday when they asked him directly, have you contacted everybody who has offered assistance with this problem? Well, if he didn't know I've offered assistance, then he's either living in a barn or his, his, the people working for him have not notified him. Because I had a discussion with an, uh, with a, an FBI agent last night where I said, your, your director lied under oath to Congress. No one contacted me. And if he did not know that I was offering assistance, then I, I'm not believing it, Alex. The rest of the world sure as hell knew. The FBI agent you, I was You were on every news channel out there. It was huge. Yes. So, so he lied under oath to Congress. Now, that's how badly they want this key, Alex. Now, lying under oath to Congress, it doesn't matter why you're lying. It's a serious yeah, let's be clear. Panel. They don't want to get warrants and go to the phone company, the ISP, or have computer people break up on the phones individually. They want the master quick key to do it remotely to millions of phones at once. Every, it's, it's not remotely necessarily, but, but this is the beginning, Alex. If they give them the key to break into every iPhone on the planet, the next you're going to go to Google, and they say, we want to do the same thing with Android, which is 95% of the market. And the next thing you know, we have no safety, we have no privacy, we have no security. And once you've given that key or well, you created that key, the FBI can't keep it, like I brought out last night. One month ago, two 15-year-old boys hacked into the FBI and walked off with... Exactly, stay there, come back with that. Exactly, you have the federal government with tens of millions of employees full of foreign asset moles, Everything the feds have, they give to the communist Chinese and everybody else. So why don't we just give the Apple key to the Chinese government? I mean, how, how about that? Because that's, that's what the FBI is asking for. John McAvee, he's the expert, coming right back. And then your phone calls. Stay with us. Here is the FBI director, James Comey, testifying before Congress yesterday. Thank you for hosting this conversation and for helping us all talk about an issue that I believe is the hardest issue I've confronted in government which is how to balance the privacy we so treasure that comes to us through the technology that we love and also achieve public safety, which we also all very much treasure. Two terrorists in the name of ISIL killed 14 people and wounded 22 others at a office gathering and left behind three phones, two of which the cheaper models, they smashed beyond use, and the third was left locked. In any investigation is done competently, the FBI would try to get access to that phone. It's important that it's a live, ongoing terrorism investigation, but in any criminal investigation, a competent investigator would try and use all lawful tools to get access to that device. There are no demons in this debate. The companies are not evil, the government's not evil. You have a whole lot of good people who see the world through different lenses, who care about things, all care about the same things, in my view. Sure, potentially because it, any decision of a court about a matter is potentially useful to other courts, which is what a precedent is. I happen to think, having talked to experts, there are technical limitations to how useful this particular San Bernardino technique will be, given how the phones have changed. But sure, other courts, other prosecutors, other lawyers for, for companies will look to that for guidance or to try and distinguish it. Yeah. There's already a door on that iPhone. 
Essentially, we're asking Apple, take the vicious guard dog away. Let us try and pick the lock. We're going to go back to James uh, Clapper's comments and other people, you know, claiming that, you know, there, there is no NSA spying domestically and just, you know, other ridiculous lies. We have those clips. That's the longer segment. Your phone calls are coming up. John McAfee of McAfee2016.com running for president. So our guest is a short segment, long segment coming up. Technically going through the lies there, he's either super ignorant and then isn't qualified to be FBI director or he's lying to everyone. I'm not a computer person. I knew day one. They could go to the phone company, go to the ISP, get all the records of where they went. Um, you claim something smashed, it can be reconstructed, but this other phone isn't. And now they admit to Congress, no, we just want to make all the companies constantly give us the keys or make keys to all the encryption. I mean, this is such deception. Well, they're, they're trying to make it an issue of privacy versus security. And, and privacy is certainly an issue. But I knew that's what they would say, so I never mentioned privacy. I talked about the insecurity they would create to the American citizens by making Apple create a master key, which is going to get into the public within a matter of weeks. And if the public has the master key, then while your daughter is showering, if her phone is on the console, the Chinese or black hat hackers can be watching her. They're going to steal our credit cards. They empty our bank accounts. They will steal our identities. This is what you're asking us to accept. And the FBI agent I was talking to last night kept repeating, well, it's, you know, you have to give up some privacy to get security. I said, sir, I haven't mentioned privacy. So he came prepared to talk about privacy, not about uh, a, an issue which is far more urgent, which is he's making us far more insecure by asking Apple to do this. It is absurd. We're doing this to help you and make you secure, but now your entire lives go, are going to be monitored by the entire world? That's not making me any more secure, Alex. Imagine what will happen if master encryption keys start getting made. As Apple points out, they don't even have this to get into the phone itself. They just have it on the encryption for communication. Yeah. Uh, if this president said it's a Pandora's box, what is the FBI thinking? By the way, France has come out today and wants to fine Apple 1 million euros each time it refuses to decrypt an iPhone. Well, you know, this is this is the problem with politics. And this is the problem with bureaucrats is that they're, everybody's taking more and more power. And how can the FBI gain more power? It can gain more power, Alex, by knowing everything about everybody in America at all times. This is the power that they want. Well, I don't want them to have that power. I'm sorry. They don't deserve it. Uh, and, and it's an unconstitutional. And it violates our own individual human sure, rights. Sure, sure. I mean, I'm not a master computer hacker and programmer like you, white hat <laughs> hacker, but you've hacked into governments, you've named it, exposed what happened in Belize. Isn't it the apps and things like that uh, is how people can still get in these phones, and, and most apps have already been broken. Uh, and so if somebody has a bunch of apps, the FBI has systems to break into those apps. They've also worked with app companies to put backdoors in. I mean, isn't this a red herring on top of that? Well, it's, it's a huge red herring. They want the information on the one phone. I can hack into that one phone. It'll take me some time, okay, and it'll take a team of people. So it's not something everybody can use all the time to break into iPhones. However, I can do it. I believe the FBI can do it. Why, why can 10,000 people in the world not working for the FBI be able to get into that phone, but they can't get into it? Get real, Alex. They don't really want just that one phone. They want the key. Give me the key. They probably are not, not even going to use it on that phone. The uh, keys to the kingdom. Stay there, my friend. John McAfee is our guest. I'm Alex Jones. The tip of the spear is in Fowars.com. The enemy doesn't like that site. Spread the word. We're I want to go to the callers like Adam and others that have been holding about the election. McAfee, obviously, is a presidential candidate. He can speak to that, John McAfee. Uh, and he's getting into what's happening with the NSA, the, the, the FBI. Uh, we also have election fraud going on, classic hacking of voting machines. We have all over the country, we've interviewed election judges, witnesses, people that happen to it, flips from Trump to Rubio or Cruz. And, and it's never the other way around. And we had callers calling in about that. So I want to go to your calls here in a few minutes when John McAfee... Uh, we also have a video with, with Richard Reeves saying most Sanders supporters say they'll go Trump uh, instead. G getting into Trump, one of my biggest problems with him, and I imagine this is yours because we're on the same page together, is he doesn't know computers. And I know people that know him. They say, no, he doesn't even really look at computers. Everything's printed off for him. He reads like six, seven, eight hours a day. But everything's printed for him. He, he doesn't want to watch videos. He wants transcripts. He's a speed reader. And he's just like, they have a warrant. Let them in. He doesn't understand.
So he needs to have somebody like you advising him if you don't win, and, and, he, and he does. But he, you know, he says things like that. He just doesn't understand. I'm not a tech guy, but I understand. And I understand the FBI is classically lying about this. And plus, the government's bringing in ISIS to attack us and then saying, give our rights up, just like Europe's done. What else is important for folks to know about this? Because you've done this on TV. You can get into these phones. You can get into iPhones. Um, I've, I've talked to people with, with iPads and iPhones. I've talked to the awesome police. So I know friends that have had their phones stolen, iPhones, and the police go, no, they've got fencers that know how to basically get into it. Uh, and they usually get through apps. So I don't think it's 10,000 people that know. I think it's more than that, especially if it's an older version because these hacks get online. It's, now, you're the, one of the master hackers. You're well known as a computer guru. Is in my layman's uh, moving around in the dark here? Am I right or wrong? Well, you're absolutely right. But let me, let me explain something extremely important, which most of the American public and all of our government seems to have missed, Alex, and that is the next war is not going to be fought with nuclear weapons and battleships and airplanes. It will be a cyber war, and it will be many times more devastating than anything imaginable in a nuclear war. A report to Congress last year by a group of cybersecurity professionals claimed that 90% of the American population would perish. Yes, would perish in a, in a cyber war with China. And the, why? Because China currently has the ability to destroy our entire power infrastructure. Last, last and our month, chips were built there, and they've been caught putting back doors even in defense ships. Why would our elite make everything smart, have us adopt it, the Chinese haven't, and then now we're wide open to a Skynet takeover because it's on purpose? Yes, of course, because the chips that, they're, are, that we're using are, are right. For all of our communication software is made by the Chinese, and it's firmware. So we can't even see what's inside it, Alex. So, so the Chinese have back doors. They can shut down our communications. Trojans. Last, last uh, month, the Ukrainian power system was shut down for an entire day, the entire country, by two teenage hackers using a piece of software that was 35 years old. And the teenagers Dark. are also breaking into the FBI. And they broke into the FBI just last month. So the Chinese have the ability to shunt our power in such a way that we burn out substation after substation until there's nothing left. And we will not have the power, Alex, to rebuild. Here's but won't Hillary save us then? Because, I mean, you I'm sorry? I'm being sarcastic. Won't, won't, won't Hillary save us? Won't political correctness save us from that? <laughs> yeah, that was a good joke. No, <laughs> it won't. We, we have to have someone who understands the, the, at least the fundamental science, the cyber science, that glues our entire society and our industry together, Alex, because everything is run on computers now. The reason we would all die if there were a cyber war is because we would starve to death. Without power, we can't run our computers. And computers, for example, control all food distribution in this country. We, can't, we have no backups. We fired the people that used to do it. So if our computers are down, we don't get food distribution. In three weeks, uh, the Walmart uh, food stores and, and, and uh, Safeway and every other food store in the country will run out of food. We can't distribute it. We cannot produce it because all the packaging... Why would our government more than any other wire everything in to be dependent and put back doors in it and buy chips from our enemies who've been caught you know, having shut-off switches in the ICBMs? I mean, look, the globalists moved everything to China on purpose. They've double-crossed us. We've been sold out. We're being set up. Well, you're right. You're absolutely right because nobody, seriously, Alex, nobody, not even our government well, officials, could be that stupid. No, exactly. I, I Why do they badmouth the founding fathers? Why do they badmouth families? Why do they badmouth people that are into patriotism and sovereignty? Because we've already been taken over and they want a kill switch, a heart plug, to destroy the country if we don't play ball with the new world order. We have been totally right. taken over. The, the most horrific thing I heard in the interview with the FBI representative last night was he said, you have to give up freedom and privacy in order to get security. I was flabbergasted and, and shocked, Alex, but that's the attitude those that, that they give have. Up, those oh, that give up that is, liberty for security get neither. That's, well, they, that's absolutely. Absolutely. Ben Franklin, I think, was the first to that's say right. that. But, but absolutely. Uh, but they don't really believe it. They want us to believe it. So that they and they've already bought armored redoubts in other parts of the world. They're setting us up to be destroyed. Yeah, well, they're actually foreign agents. I'm, I'm serious, folks. I'm not just saying that. We are totally run by enemies, preparing us down the road to be nuked, shut down, you name it. I mean, we are gone. We are, our borders are wide open, but they take our rights. They ship in radical Muslims, but they take our rights. We're wide open. Europe's going down, too. It's over. This is World War IV. We were taken over by globalists.
But, but, you know, we're still Americans, Alex, and I think the human spirit is indomitable and infinite, and we're not stupid. We're not. I mean, I tried to tell the FBI agent, the representative last night, you know, we aren't that stupid. Please, we're not. We're not going to buy it anymore. We're not going to listen to it anymore. I we agree. See. Don't you think Trump is a manifestation of the anger and the revolution that's happening right now? Absolutely. I, he's angry. I'm angry. You're angry. We're all angry. We're, we have to be angry. Look, what's, look what has happened to us. Look what has been done to us by our government. Our government tells me that my body does not belong to me. It belongs to them. It tells me what I can put into it, what I can do with it, what new life-saving drugs, if I develop a terminal illness, I'm allowed or not allowed to take because if I'm a dying man, they're afraid that these drugs may harm me. My God, my body belongs to me, Alex. Your body belongs to you. They want you to have the right to kill yourself, though, but not treat yourself. Yes, basically, that's it. Absolutely. What's that tell so, you? What you did? It's, it's a horror that we're living in. It's a nightmare. But we, we need to wake up as Americans, and we can, Alex. We can. We're, we are. I agree. John people. McAfee, I want to go to calls here on the presidential race. You're an expert on hacking. Uh, you know, where they flip the numbers and the rest of it. I appreciate Adam holding. I appreciate Bruce holding. I appreciate uh, Mike and Craig and Wild in that order holding. Uh, you're on the air with John McAfee. And let me give everybody, uh, which one of the websites the best to visit? McAfee2016.com, sir? 2016.com. McAfee2016.com is my campaign website. We are up against the two major political parties. They are machines. They are vastly funded. We are a small organization. Do you think you'll get the Libertarian nomination? Oh, absolutely, Lawrence. There's no, there's, no, there's no question in my mind. I mean, I'm sure there's a question in Governor uh, uh, Johnson's mind, but not in mine. What kind of dog is that back there? Is that a cat? Uh, it's a Commodore. It's a huge dog. It I thought it was a pounds. huge dog. I just couldn't tell it was on a table right behind your back. Uh, what's the... Uh, what? About three feet away. What's, what's the Commodore's name? Uh, 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 Marley. Marley? We have four dogs. Uh, oh, so I, I have a sister named Marley. Uh, 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 Marley! Marley, come on over here. He's not going to pay attention to you. They're very independent dogs, Alex. You have some food, he'll come. If I had a rib or something, maybe. Marley, come on over here. Oh, look at the little Snoopies. That's a pit bull, right? One of them. That that's, a, that, that's, a, that's a sheep dog, right? Your Commodore? Pit bull, Commodore, and, and a little mutt here. Oh, I like dogs. So you got four so of those sweethearts, huh? We have four of them, yep. Well, let's... Total, total weight of 350 pounds. They would make better presidents than uh, Hillary. Or Mark, of course, she is barking like a dog now. Adam in Minnesota, you're on the air with John McAvee. He's running for 2016 for the Libertarian nomination. Uh, Adam, you're on the air worldwide. Uh, hey there, Alex. Uh, hey there, Mr. McAfee. Uh, I actually just got an email from McAfee's uh, uh, spyware, so I should probably renew that uh, with the free trial ending, but glad to be on with you guys. Yeah, yeah. McAfee doesn't, he hasn't been part of McAfee's spy, uh, company for decades. Or uh, How long since you got out of McAfee? It's been it's been 15 years or more, Alex. And when I had the when I had the company, the software was fantastic. As soon as I left, it went downhill. So I've had nothing to do with it for 15 years. Yeah, uh, just, uh, Adam, what's your view on Super Tuesday and uh, what you witnessed? Yeah, so I have a, a couple uh, two part questions. First, about the election, and then the second part about the esoteric hive mind. And I actually kind of want to get uh, McAfee's take on that as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, with the election yesterday, I'm from Minnesota, and surprisingly, Rubio, his only winning was here. And I think it has to do with these mind games that the, the establishment plays through the media, you know, Marco Mentum and, 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 and this KKK disavowing question that really just gets people into a locked mindset of, of, of oh, I'm going to vote this way so I can be viewed this way or, or whatnot. And yeah, so I think, you know, like you said before, with Rubio's votes turning to, or Trump's votes turning to Rubio, it's a kind of a shaving, kind of getting a close call. Because if you won Texas, Cruz would have been out of the race. And I think he probably potentially did win Texas. Did yes, Iowa. but it's beyond that. It's beyond that. They can't have him having 50% of the delegates when he goes into the nomination process. They're allowed to vote then amongst themselves and the delegates and steal it, and they've said they will. So this is 100% proof going on all over the place. They're setting it up yet again uh, because they're so scared of him. And how are we ever going to get a libertarian elected You know, if, 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 if these two-party systems continue to engage in all this uh, jury rigging? Well, okay, the, the, the mention that you mentioned earlier, Alex, I think, I think the press has a huge part in this whole issue. For example, you mentioned Donald Trump and, and his uh, relationship to the KKK leader. They purposely set that up. He's many times before disavowed this gentleman, uh, David Duke, many times. Uh, but they set this entire thing up so they could make it look like 
He was a KKK sympathizer. And then even though he disavows it 10, 14 oh. times, they keep saying, why won't you disavow? In the same press conference last night, we, we got to put this together. Three different reporters say disavow. He goes, well, I already did disavow a bunch, but I disavow again. Next thing, will you dis why won't you disavow the KKK? I did just disavow, but okay, disavow again. Third guy, and he goes, wait a minute. When are you going to stop this? And see, they'll use that to say he didn't disavow. So, McAfee, let me ask you now, as a joke, will you disavow the KKK even though you have nothing to do with it? <laughs> I, I know no one within the KKK, at least to my knowledge, Alex. And I, I will definitely disavow the KKK. I'm against well, anybody. Hold on. Why won't you disavow them? I'm sorry? Why won't you disavow them? Why, why do I? <laughs> <laughs> you get it now. Go ahead and disavow point again. Made. I've got the moral authority. Point point disavow again. Point uh, uh, I point made. You've got it. This is how it works, Alex. This no, is wait exactly a minute. You won't disavow? Why are you? Disavow. <laughs> Say uh, I disavow. <laughs> My wife is black. How's that? No, 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 no. Say I disavow. <laughs> I disavow, Alex. <laughs> Wait a minute, John McAfee. Why won't you disavow? The kick, you, you're seeing him not disavow, folks. <laughs> I'm going to ask you one more time, or Paul Ryan's going to have to come out and give a speech. Now, he'd done it 10 times by Paul Ryan's speech. He's done it over 14 as of last night. And it's, I want you to disavow 14 times and disavow the way I want. Go ahead. I, I want to just continue to say one one phrase over and over. My wife is black. My wife is black. And if I keep saying that, not good that, enough. Not good enough. Say I disavow. <laughs> Seriously. Okay, right. Maybe Duke is my best friend. We hang out together and drink beers. Now, if you actually. Uh, okay. Why that... won't you disavow the KKK? <laughs> no, seriously. I'm going to uh -huh. take this piece and edit it together with him disavowing over and over again, and at the same press conference disavowing, and they go, why won't you disavow? It's that crazy. What are these people thinking, John? The a ABC and NBC and CNN are going to take that cut where I said, David Duke is my best friend, and they're going to use that. You know this for a fact. This is how it works. This is just how it works. <laughs> but, you know, the good news is people aren't buying it anymore, John. Yeah, we're not. We're getting smarter, Alex. We really are. Thank God for that. Uh, or at least, at least you can fool some of the people all of the time, all the people some of the time, but you just can't fool all of us forever. And we're getting smart and we're looking through it and we're seeing through this nonsense. The government wants to look into my life. No, I want to look into the government's life. It's our money that you're spending. How are you spending it? What are you doing with it? I want to know. Well, that makes a lot of sense, but you wouldn't disavow the KKK. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hey, Adam, anything else from Minnesota? Yeah, so uh, the second part I had was about the esoteric knowledge you're talking about and something about eschatology, the study of end times, because honestly, when we do get to the rabbit hole and the father of all lies, the devil, uh, we do see, you know, the coming of the Antichrist. And, and, and one big psyop I think that people are not really realizing is that, you know, when they come in with these, you know, virtual realities and, and these alternative uh, worlds for us to just kind of delve into and, and, and get sucked into, and really, like, I think what Drudge said about, you know, feeling the air, feeling the water is important, but when the Antichrist comes, he will come in the place of saying he is Jesus, that all the people around the world, the billions of Christians, will flock to him and see that, you know, man, God being one and the same. But I think in, in terms of when Jesus returns, he will, you know, he will disavow that and say, you know, there is only one God, the Father in heaven. You know, he says, why do you call me good? And, and, and when you see in the, in the Old Testament the, the uh, Moses and his brother Aaron washing their feet, washing their hands and praying and bowing, in prayer, you see these indigenous spiritual practices continued by the Orthodox Jews, by the Orthodox Christians, and, and, and by the Muslims. So at the end of the day, I think what they're really trying to do is, is continue this, these mind games and this brainwashing. I hear you. I appreciate your call. Well, look, I've always said this, whether the Bible's right or God's real or whatever, the elite is using as a template of control, and they act just like the devil would. So it's real regardless. So end of debate. I hear you. Bruce in New York, you're on the air with John McAfee. Go ahead. Hey, uh, Alex and John, uh, pleasure to be on the air. Uh, I need you to disavow the KKK first, Bruce. Can you disavow that for me? Absolutely. Okay, wait a minute. I got I to let racists go, Bruce. You didn't disavow the KKK. I did. I said absolutely not in America. Wow, Bruce, you won't disavow the KKK. I'm going to have Paul Ryan call a press conference. Well, maybe uh, you're working for CNN. I want to hear you disavow their practices. CNN actually said that. Disavow it. Uh, I, I disavow every practice. Oh. And, you know, it's and a shame. Breathing. CNN, <laughs> it, it is a shame that CNN has been riding this dead horse for three days. 
I'm so pissed. I, I hear you. It's pure propaganda. Uh, What's your view on what's happening, brother? Well, I just wanted to call and say uh, thank you and thank your staff for everything they do. Well, it choked up here because. Uh, I understand because you've been no. exposed for, for for being a bad person. See, I have moral authority because I accuse you of being one of the Klan, so I'm I'm good. By the way, I, well, I have Alex, a show starting next week on MSNBC. I should say that I originally called to talk about Trump, but go ahead. I want you and your I want you and your viewers to know that uh, I served in our military for almost eight years, and Appreciate your courage. the CIA, the CIA for twenty three years after that. And, uh, you know, I had to veil over my eyes, but, uh, you know, after 9-11, everything else happened, uh, my eyes opened and, uh, I can only say that, you know, there's, there's, uh, bad things happening in our country. I agree. Would you agree that we've pretty much been taken over, that th this is an occupation? That's why they have us doing bad things. They want to demoralize all of us. Well, here, here's, the one of the, here's one of the worst things we've done here, Alex, and that is uh, we treat our veterans uh, like they're aliens. Now, we ask a young man and a young woman to go overseas and risk their life and say, look, you may not come back alive. And if you do come back, you may come back missing an arm or a leg or both. And when they do come back missing an arm or a leg, we say thank you and we discard them. It's a tragedy. We have a contract with these people. It may not be a written contract, but it's a it's a... An, uh, an, a known contract. If we ask you to risk your life for the country, but then, good God, Alex, we owe you something when you come back and you're maimed. We owe it to you, and we, we're not giving they it to you. They said they're persecuting them because these wars aren't good, but these are at least people that are willing to sacrifice. The parasite class, the donor class, is scared of them. Sir, uh, you say you were in the CIA. That's where they recruits out of the military, obviously. It's a huge organization. Uh, but specifically, you were probably, I don't know what you were involved in, analyst, humet, whatever it was, but Back then, we were really dealing with the Russians and others, and we didn't have all the electronic surveillance. So that's why the missions, I know, were a lot different. But the mission today is domestic, and a lot of really bad stuff's happening. What is your view, or what ended up waking you up, and where do you think this is all going? Well, when I when I uh, when I signed on with the agency, it was uh, I, it, I served in the European theater uh, for 20 years. Uh, traveled almost every month. And, uh, you know, we're fighting the Soviet Union. So, in my viewpoint, you know, that was the, the greatest thing we could do as a country. But, uh, you know, there are a lot of, you know, there, there's a lot happening behind the curtain that people don't realize. And, uh, you know, after, you know, after 9-11... When 9-11 happened, I'm not, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but, you know, a lot of things happened with 9-11 with the two buildings coming down and then Building 7 dropping like, you know, it was, uh, you know, a, uh, a demo uh, uh, project. Sure. Uh, you know, you, you have to you know let me guess. I, I bet you weren't an analyst or a paper pusher or a bureaucrat in the CIA. Were you a guy on the ground? Yeah, it was a guy on the ground, but but not not uh, not ground, not the ground force. You know, I wasn't toting guns or anything. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, I served my country. No, no, I understand. Uh, I, I, you just sound like a regular guy, but also smart. And uh, it's it's pretty amazing. Folks don't know what went on during the Cold War with people on the ground in Europe. Uh, pretty wild stuff from uh, what I've read in books and and also heard from some people that were there. Uh, just daily killings, fighting the Soviets, uh, just amazing stuff. And a lot of that's heated back up in Ukraine today. God bless you, sir. I appreciate your call. Uh, John McAfee, I want to hit a, a call or two here in the next segment. Um, I really appreciate you coming on with us. Other tidbits of knowledge as you run for president, uh, people getting behind you, obviously, with a libertarian uh, vote. I don't really see you hurting Trump or Hillary. I see you kind of equally drawing from liberals and conservatives and libertarians and certainly educating people. So I support your run for the presidency because I hope you get it, you know, to, to, to use it as a bully pulpit to educate because resistance is victory. Even if you don't win, it's a win. So I would challenge folks to get involved and support you. I know Jakari Jackson is a supporter of you. That's who he says he's voting for president for. So he hopes you get the nomination. Well, you know, I, I will win if we get the American support and, and we need support, Alex. We're a very small party. 
Um, and please go to McAfee2016.com if you can volunteer your time or even donate 50 cents. It would help us tremendously. We are up against the two major machines that basically chew up people, the soul and the body of, of, of mankind, and make them cogs in a wheel. I, I hate to say that, but it is the truth. And it has to change. And this is the only year I think we have where this will happen. We can change. We can actually become, make a president from the Libertarian Party this year. I believe I will be the nominee. And you have to believe me, I'm 70. I do not do things lightly. I'm not doing this to make a statement or to try to, to raise the awareness for a topic. No, I'm doing this to win. I can't afford to waste just a year doing nothing. I will win this, this, this presidential election, I promise you. But we need your help. Well, John McAvee, I know you'll win the info war, getting the word out regardless. So God bless you. I look forward to speaking to you again very, very soon. Thank you very much, Alex.